uh, and we're going to always use addresses that were given to us by our uh, ISP. Uh, usually it doesn't matter which one you use or which one you don't use, uh, except for one important exception, the exception being SSL. SSL encrypts communications, uh, and because it encrypts communications, you remember how we said that on the server side, uh, we have a special header uh, in part of HTTP called the host header? Well, that host header gets encrypted by SSL also, which means that there's no way that we can, uh, that we can support SSL uh, on a single port and IP address to accept multiple websites. Because the idea behind one of the main uh, aspects in SSL is the security certificate that you're given. And that security certificate, that URL, has to exactly match the website that you're looking at. However, the web server won't know what website you want to look at until it's able to decode, decrypt the message and look at the host header. So we've kind of got a, a, a chicken and the egg kind of routine. Now the truth is uh, there is already a workaround for that, and I believe that even by now it's even supported by the latest versions of the Apache web server. The problem is that right now to the best of my knowledge, most major web browsers do not support this, this method. Um, and this method, method uh, is, something, is, uh, is TLS. Uh, it's very much like SSL. It's also uh, it's, it's another extension, basically, to the HTTP protocol. And it says it defines a special type of request which tells the server, I want to create an SSL channel to this host, and then, you, and then you have a host header. And that first command is sent unencrypted. So that command allows the server to, to know what host you want to look for. And, and everything that gets sent beyond that point will then be encrypted. And at that point, the, 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 the client and server already both know which IP they're on, and they both know which um, URL on that IP they want. And based on that, the normal model of SSL can work well with virtual hosting. Uh, however, since, as I mentioned, most browsers don't support that yet, it's not likely to be something that you're going to deal with uh, in the immediate future. Uh, so for now, normally your ISP will be kind enough uh, to give you an IP address per uh, per secure SSL website that you need to run. You might have to pay for them, um, but they'll give them to you. Um, so in this example, we're going to set up a non-SSL um, website, and we're going to want to set it up on 192.168.2.61. We're going to leave this, uh, these two boxes and add name, virtual server address, and listen on address. Uh, these two directives tell Webmin to make sure Apache knows that we're running in virtual, uh, virtual host mode, uh, which it doesn't by default, but it's uh, very simple to do. The port we're going to leave as default, which is 80. For document root, we're going to specify the path that we set up earlier which was home, Isaac, www. And we're going to leave the checkbox saying allow access to, to this directory, which tells Apache that it is allowed to serve files out of this directory. For the server name, we're going to want to use our domain. So that's going to be www.mybrandnewdomain.com. Add virtual server to file, leave this as the default, different uh, operating systems will have different things. And for copy directives from, uh, also, again, leave that as default. That's very useful if you have one sh kind of a, a, a shell set of, no, shell is misleading. If you have a pre, if you have one virtual host that you use to template as a template for other virtual hosts, uh, let's say you need a, a lot of things set up, you know, in just the way that that, that you want for, for all of your sites. Uh, so it would be very 
this copy directives from uh, directive would come in handy then because you could copy all the directives from that template virtual host. So we're going to create that. And there we go. And now we see that it shows up here. Uh, address 192.168.2.61. Server name www.mybrandnewdomain.com. Uh, port any, which is okay because by default it's sitting on 80. And document slash home slash Isaac slash www. So to activate this, we're going to click on apply. Now we're going to go to our second tab. So now we're going to go back to 192.168.2.61. And we still get the same screen we got before. Wait a second. What's wrong? Actually, if we think about it, nothing's wrong. Because remember what we said about the virtual hosts and the host header? Well, look at what we entered. We entered 192.168.2.61. But the... Uh, the the website that we set up lives at the domain name. So we have to actually type in www.mybrandnewdomain.com and there it goes. You can set up as many virtual hosts as you want on a single IP address using this technique. It's really, really easy um, and, and it's really, really easy. So to summarize, most of what we did today was theory. We talked about uh, the, the use, setting up virtual hosts in Apache and how there can be multiple websites hosted on a single server and with a single IP address. Uh, we went through the walk through the steps together of creating a simple website on the web in the web server configuration file, uh, and saw how to browse it from a browser. What we didn't talk about today uh, are advanced topics like CGI, uh, PHP, and using database and other advanced scripting techniques. Some of those uh, issues we'll touch on later uh, in the series. But to get the complete picture, I highly suggest that you get yourself a copy of the dedicated servers handbook and you can do that by browsing to www.thededicatedserverhandbook.com uh, and get yourself a copy. Uh, so that's it for now. Next time we're going to talk about setting up a database with PHP MyAdmin and MySQL. Uh, until then, this is Isaac and have a great day. Bye-bye.